today at this Lunch and Learn. It is a beautiful Wednesday here in Oklahoma. <laughs> um, I would love to hear where you guys are all joining us from in the comment section. So that way we can see where everybody is from. I'm looking forward to uh, chatting today. We're going to chat all about companion plants. Um, but first, I just wanted to introduce myself to, uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Carrie. Um, I am one of the creators of the From Seed to Spoon mobile app. My husband, Dale, and I created it to help us garden and grow food and all of that. Um, we started growing a really, really, well, there you go, 2015. <laughs> we, uh, we started with just an empty backyard and not a lot there. And then a couple years later, we turned our entire backyard into a bunch of food and garden spaces and all of that. We absolutely love growing food. So throughout this process, we had, a, you know, a difficult time. We wanted to remember certain things. So we, uh, we created the app to try and help us along the way. And I still use the app like every single day too, to help me, um, especially knowing exactly when to go about planting things. Cause it'll pull exact planting dates based on your location and um, and give you exact dates based on the predicted frost dates and all of that, which is probably my favorite feature right there, honestly, because that is something I can never remember. I, you know, I, I don't like doing math in my head of what is two weeks before your last frost and all of that. So it's super helpful for me. Um, I see lots of people popping in the chat. I see people from all over the country so far. Oh, and Jamaica, that's fantastic. Lots of people around here. Well, I'm really excited that you guys are joining me today to talk a little bit about companion planting. And I am super excited to announce that we are going to be doing a giveaway at the end of this presentation. So make sure that you guys stay tuned to the very end because we will be picking a winner from somebody who registered that is present today. <laughs> And um, also, just to let you know as well, today is Wednesday, and every Wednesday, Park Seed has a Wow Wednesday deal that they do. It's absolutely amazing. Every Wednesday, there's something super exciting. This week, I know we popped it up on the screen right there. It is for the Nana Dome, and this is such an amazing deal. It is over 60% off. So this is the Wow Wednesday deal for today. I will have my helpers pop into the chat and put the link for that. If you guys wanted to check that deal out, it's only for today. So today, Wednesday. So make sure that you check that out. Okay. So we are going to be talking all about companion planting today. And companion planting is one of my favorite um, one of my favorite methods that we use in the, in the garden. It is, fun and it makes it a lot easier so you don't have to use pest you know pest products and things like that it can really help if you do it right so i wanted to talk a little bit today just about some easy tips and tricks for companion planting and getting started and what are some good things to plant with each other and all of that so first of all I wanted to talk a little bit about what is companion planting because some people may not know exactly what companion planting was. So this is the method of planting certain plants next to each other that sometimes they are mutually beneficial to each other. Sometimes it can one or the other is beneficial to, to the other one. So right here in this picture, I have some tomatoes with some marigolds next to it, and then some tomatoes also. So you can see how I am using some marigolds to try and help ward off some pests for the tomatoes. But there's different ways to go about companion planting. There's some of them will bring in some pollinators. Some are known to help repel pests. Sometimes they can act like trap plants and attract pests to them so that way they are used as a plant that gets all of the pests instead of the other plant you're trying to protect. 
Um, sometimes they do things for the soil. Sometimes plants can um, pull certain <coughs> certain things up from the uh, from the air and bring it down into the soil. They can help to provide shade, support, all of that. So today we're going to talk about my ten favorite companion plants. And then we're also going to touch at the end as well about some of your most common questions from the most common plants and issues that you guys have had. And what are some plants to help companion plant with those? So, oh, first of all, I did want to make sure that I mentioned our From Seed to Spoon app has an entire section for our companion planting. So it's called Friends section. And this is it, underneath each plant that you go to. So for right here, this is showing images from tomatoes because a lot of people ask about tomatoes. So tomatoes right up here, if you go to the friends tab in the From Seed to Spoon app, it'll show the friends and then the thumbs down, it'll show enemies because there's also things that just like some really good things that you want to plant with it. There's also some things you want to avoid. Some things don't do well together. So the app will kind of just make it easier for you while you're going out there planting. You can just check, just double check like what is good and what's bad um, before you plant them out in the ground. So first of all on the list is marigold. I know if, if you guys know anything about companion planting, you will not be surprised that I put marigold up here first. Marigold is probably one of my favorite companion plants just because it is super functional and it's actually edible as well too, if you didn't know that. Um, but it's very functional. It helps a lot of different plants and it looks really pretty as well. So you have a lot of really great things right here in one plant. So the marigold helps in a lot of different ways. So if you have harmful nematodes that are in the soil, marigold can actually help with that as well because in their roots, they can secrete some chemical that can help to destroy the harmful nematodes in the soil. So it can really be beneficial for that. So it can help the soil. It's also been known to repel things like cabbage moths, bean beetles, white flies, and the dreaded tomato hornworm moth. So it's really, really an amazing thing to plant next to, obviously, tomatoes, right? <laughs> um, so they can be really helpful that ways. And they can also help to bring in some bees and other pollinators, as well as some predatory insects. So what I mean by that is that some, there are some predatory insects that prey upon these bad pests. So things like um, hoverflies and ladybugs and things like that um, can be attracted to these. And um, also like spiders and praying mantis, things like that can be attracted to these. And then they go out and they will go and attack the aphids that are attacking your garden, things like that. So they can really be beneficial by bringing in those predatory insects and those insects will do the work for you and get rid of the bad pests. So it's fantastic to have around. Um, marigold especially does really well planted of course with tomatoes. I always call them besties. I always plant marigolds with tomatoes and, um, also, they do really well with things like cucumbers and potatoes and different squashes as well, and as, as well as broccoli because it helps to repel the cabbage moss. So pretty much anything in that brassica family, it's going to do really well with. Um, okay, are marigolds hard to start from seed? Um, I mean, they can be. Um, I would always recommend using the, uh, the uh, biodome. I always pop the seeds in the biodome and I don't have any trouble at all um, because it's a super great environment for them, very humid, and it works really well. Um, but you can seed start it anywhere, any way you want to. Um, I always I always love the biodome, though, the best. But yeah, absolutely, you can start them from seed. There's a lot of different varieties. I like the Parks Whopper mix because it's really huge blooms, and like huge blooms. They don't call it a Whopper for nothing. <laughs> Okay, so my next plant that I wanted to touch on is the nasturtium. So the nasturtium flower also acts kind of like a trap crop. 
So this is a little bit like what we were talking about in, in the past, um, about attracting different pests over to your other plants. So you can use your nasturtiums as a plant to guide some aphids or squash bugs, things like that over to them instead of your other plant. So you can use them to help attract those other pests over there and deter them away from your plant that you want to protect. And the nasturtiums also are really great at attracting different pollinators as well as the predatory insects again too. Works really well. And again, this one will be really good to plant with different members of the brassica family. So broccoli, cabbage, kale, um, and then the cucumber does really well with that, as well as um, pumpkins, zucchini, so pretty much anything in that squash family right there. These are going to be really helpful too. And then the next one, oh, I see a, I see a question. Chamomile. What can you plant with? So what can you plant with chamomile? Um, I mean, chamomile is a great companion plant by itself. Um, I would I would use a chamomile for any sort of other brassicas as well. Um, chamomile is going to be another really good um, companion plant that'll help to bring in pollinators and also help to disguise your plants that are next to it too, because it has that strong scent. <laughs> Okay, so next we have <laughs> the uh, calendula, which is pot marigold. This can, this is very similar again to marigold, but I absolutely love these ones too. Um, these are very similar. They are going to help as well with the harmful nematodes in the soil. And these are known to help repel the asparagus beetles as well. So if you have an asparagus um, beetle issue. If you're growing asparagus, I'd highly recommend growing this next to it. It would be super helpful. Um, and this can also be helpful for the tomato hornworm as well. Um, because this will help to bring in different predatory insects. And a lot of those too will help to attack things that will attack your tomatoes or attack your other plants that you're doing. So the, again, this one is really good for asparagus and tomatoes because it'll help with that tomato hornworm issue and carrots and peas, potatoes, all of those. This calendula will do fantastic work for you. And then next, this is another one of my very, very favorite companion plants. Um, I use this one a lot, especially I mean, if you guys follow me at all. Whenever I'm doing planting outdoors, you'll notice I plant basil with my tomatoes like all the time. And I always do a, a pairing of three. So I do my tomato and in a really large smart pot and I do a basil on one side and a, a marigold on the other. So that way I can have all three of them all together because this basil is super helpful as well for um, helping protect the tomato especially. That's probably my favorite way to use it. But they can really help in a lot of different ways. The basil helps to repel things like aphids. So if you have an aphid issue, it can help disguise your plants from them. White flies and thrips. And again, that tomato hornworm too. Even things like Japanese beetles, they can be helpful with. I know a lot of people have had issues with that in the past. Um, and bean beetles. Uh, basil can also attract in pollinators too because they can flower um, and it can really bring in a lot of um, different pollinators that want to get to the the uh, flow flowers up on top. And um, so basil is also known to help to improve the flavor and increase the yield of the tomatoes too. So it helps in more ways than just pest management and bringing in pollinators. So it can actually, it's known to improve the flavor too, which is amazing. Um, so I always plant basil again with all of my tomatoes and use them to protect them also to help to improve the flavor, all of that. And I plant them with my tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers, carrots, potatoes, all of that. I mean, basil is a wonderful companion plant. Um, absolutely. Okay, next 
is lavender. Um, and I said mint as well, because it is in the same family. So I wanted to include them together. So lavender and mint can both help to repel mosquitoes. Um, I say they are the dreaded mosquitoes, fleas, moths, and ticks, lots of different things that they can help with. Um, not to say that they will 100% fix your issues, because I know that that's not true, but they can definitely help. Um, and they can also definitely bring in a lot of pollinators. There's a lot of uh, pollinators that love um, lavender, lavender flowers. And then also I would plant this with um, different like broccolis and cabbage. So again, things in the brassica family, um, as well as like squash and cucumbers, it can really help to um, repel different things too. And especially with the scent of it, it's so strong, strongly scented. It can really help disguise any, any sort of uh, pests that are trying to come in and finding your, your other plants that you want to protect. Um, the biggest thing that I do want to mention, though, whenever you, you are using mint as a companion plant, you do want to make sure to put it in its own little container or else the mint is going to take over the entire pot. So what I <laughs> usually do is have the mint in its own little tiny pot and I put it like right up next to um, my squash plant. That's that's what I did last year because um, it can it can really help to protect it. Um, so I, I put it in a little pot, put it right up next to the base of the plant. And uh, it actually did seem to really help. Okay. <clears throat> and next, well, I think we're at our halfway point. I do want to mention too, uh, make sure that you are staying tuned because we are going to be doing a giveaway at the very end. So make sure that you guys stay tuned. It's going to be for that wow wednesday deal that's going on too and also for a free year of premium for the app so terrific deal and uh, make sure that you guys stay tuned for that okay so let's talk a little bit about sage i absolutely love sage too i'll go although i feel like i said that about all of them i really do just love all of these though so <laughs> i do love sage Sage is especially a best friend of bees. They absolutely love it. They will attract a lot of them in and it'll really help to pollinate your other flowers that are around it or your other blooms that are around it. And sage can also bring in, again, the predatory insects to help with those um, smaller soft-bodied insects and things like that that are bothering your plants. Um, so they can help to repel things like the carrot rust flies the cabbage moths, cabbage loopers, cabbage worms, catching the hint there. Um, and then um, also flea beetles. So again, plant with cabbage. As you can tell with all of those different pests that it helps to repel, you'll definitely want to plant this with all of your cabbage and different brassica families. Um, so things like broccoli, kale, um, cauliflower, all of those will be really good for and then also things like carrots and cucumbers and tomatoes and strawberries. It's actually known to improve the flavor of as well. So strawberries is another really good one to plant your sage with. And then zinnias. I had to have zinnias on here just because they are so beautiful. Probably one of my favorite flowers. And zinnias are fantastic at bringing in pollinators. And they're really long blooming too. So they will bloom right away and they'll be long lasting throughout the season. So it'll really help to first bring them in and keep the pollinators there as well. So they can stay for a really long period of time while they're blooming. And you'll keep them around and keep them working for you in your garden. So these are really great attractors to all of the pollinators and also predator bugs too. So things like ladybugs as well will be coming in um, to come from the, um, to come to your zinnias. And I plant these zinnias with all sorts of things, but you can plant them with beans and cauliflower, tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, like pretty much anything and everything zinnias do fantastic with and really help to bring in a lot of, a lot of pollinators to your garden. <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm fighting off the cough. <clears throat> um, can zinnias be started from seed indoors? Absolutely. 
<clears throat> yes, I plant, I think last year I planted an entire 60 cell biodome full of like pretty much all zinnias because Park Seed has so many different varieties of zinnias and so many pretty ones. And I really wanted to add, um, have a variety. So I started a whole bunch from seed indoors. So they do great planted by seed indoors and then you can transplant them outdoors or you can start them by seed outdoors. There's no wrong way to do it. Zinnias are really pretty easy to start from seed. And the great thing too about zinnias is if you let the, the flowers go to seed too, like they will replant itself. So the next year you'll have more zinnias popping up again in the same spot. So there is, um, there's one patch that we don't have to plant any zinnias at all because they just keep coming back. They're absolutely beautiful. I love them. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> okay, next plant is sunflowers. Sunflowers are another one that is really great at attracting any sort of pollinators in. And they do a lot of unique things too. So they're beneficial to a lot of unique things as they can grow really tall. So they can provide shade to a lot of different plants that might need it. And they can also be used as a trellis. I don't know if you guys have ever seen one of those real large sunflowers and how thick their stalks can get and how sturdy they are. So they work really well as, um, so if you wanted to grow something up them that can trellis, it works really well um, for things like that. And also you can help to extend the growing season of certain things by planting it underneath where it is cooler. So things like lettuce, like I listed up there, can really benefit from being planted down below because you can get a little bit of shade, help get the uh, ground a little bit cooler. <clears throat> and works really well. It's a really good companions for summer squash and cucumbers and peppers and corn. All of those, it can be really beneficial for. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Yeah, there's a picture that we have um, of one of our daughters standing next to a super tall sunflower. The kids always get a really big kick out of growing the really tall mammoth sunflowers because it's like triple the size of them sometimes. And they just they just stand up at it and we're like, what? It's so fun. Dill. So dill is, I feel like, a definitely an underrated companion plant. It is super important and it brings in so many predatory insects. So it can really help to bring in the parasitic wasps. And those are something that you really need around. Um, I know whenever I say bring this in wasps, people are, are terrified of that and don't really want to bring in wasps, but you definitely want to. They can really be beneficial and I know speaking for me, I used to be absolutely terrified of wasps, but now I have learned to live with them because they are so helpful in the garden and they can really help if you have a tomato hornworm issue, they can, these parasitic wasps can lay their eggs in the tomato or, oh my goodness, in the hornworm and it, you'll see like these little white eggs coming out of it, but it helps to control them and hopefully protect your tomato from being eaten any more than it already had. So it can really help to bring in lots of different predatory insects, such as those things. And it can help with things like squash bugs. Um, so I always, I've been using a lot of dill, especially this last year. Um, I was planting a lot of dill around all of my summer squashes and of course my tomatoes too. There's a lot of super helpful things. Yeah, so this is what it looks like whenever those parasitic wasps lay their eggs in the tomato hornworm. It looks so creepy. The first time we saw this, we freaked out. We didn't know what was going on, um, but we found out. So each one of these little white things is actually an egg and a new parasitic wasp will come out from that. But you don't want to mess with it once this happens because you want to let those hatch out Um so just leave it be because that caterpillar is no longer going to be doing any harm to you, but you will be hatching new wasps. So I always leave them be when it comes to that point. 
So dill is definitely something that I highly recommend planting if you're going to be growing any sort of summer squash, zucchini, um, tomatoes, things like that. I always recommend getting some dill out there to help to encourage some of those predatory insects to help and fight for you. And finally, I did want to make sure that I mentioned beans and peas. So these are another unique ones that they actually pull nitrogen from the air and they bring it down into the soil through their roots. Uh, so it's super amazing at boosting the nitrogen level down in the, down in the soil. So this is really good for um, planting next to things that, <clears throat> planting next to things that can be heavy feeders that really want lots of fertilizer, plant some bees and peas next to it and it'll really help. And also these can be really good because a lot of these are vining, there's some pole beans, things like that. So they can provide some shade and shelter for the plants that are underneath it or to the side of it. So they can be really helpful. Um, okay, so companion for green beans. So I feel like, um, yep, yeah, I mean, we're gonna sit right here. I mean, beans and peas are really great for pretty much any sort of heavy feeders. Um, so things like cucumbers, um, root crops are really great as well. So carrots and radish, things like that. They also do really well with squashes and uh, broccoli and kale, things like that. They'll all do really well. Um, there's also the uh, Three Sisters um, garden as well that you can do that has like the the beans and the um, squash together. And they're all, um, they're all mutually beneficial. So it's pretty, it's pretty great. Um, oh yeah. So that's what I was talking with the corn too. The corn is with that. The, so it's uh, corn, bees and beans and squash. They all are really good together. All three of those together are called the three sisters. So those ones are really great. <clears throat> Okay, so we had a lot of specific questions, I feel like, and a lot of them were geared towards these plants over here. So I wanted to make sure that I touched on these plants specifically. Um, so we'll go to the next slide here. Um, and first, I did want to touch on the tomatoes because those are those are probably the most common questions that I saw whenever you guys registered for the event was about controlling the tomato pests and how to go about doing it. Um, so this next slide, there we go. <laughs> um, so these are five really great companions for tomatoes. They help in a lot of different ways. Um, so again, I know we, we touched on a lot of these as well. But so these are for tomatoes in specific. The basil can really help to make it um, to make it taste better. It'll improve their flavor and their yield. And it'll also help to repel, you know, the things like the tomato hornworms that um, they were having the issue for um, and all of that. So tomatoes are amazing. Marigolds are another really great one to do because they can deter the all of the pests as well and attract in beneficial critters and then nasturtiums are really good because they can work as a trap plant for your tomato so if you are having issues of, with any sort of beetles or aphids you can have your trap plant over here to the side that it's getting attacked not your tomato and then garlic and chives i always recommend doing those too because if you're having any sort of beetle issue um, japanese beetle june bugs aphids things like that um, it can really help to protect your tomato from them. And they can also help to improve your flavor as well, too. Um, and then I always recommend a, a root crop as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to be carrots. Carrots work really great with tomatoes. Um, but any sort of root crop here, so or carrots or radish, something along those lines, would help to aerate the soil. And it'll help the tomato to uptake more moisture and nutrients, all of that um, for during the summer. So it'll help you have a healthier tomato. So these, I mean, obviously there's a whole lot more plants that are really good for tomatoes, but these are just five of my favorite tomatoes that kind of touch base on 
different ways to help benefit the tomato. And then I wanted to touch next on one of the other most commonly asked questions, which was the squash. Um, a lot of people seem to have issues with squash bugs, squash vine borers, which I absolutely sympathize with you because they are so horrible. I, I do not like dealing with them. So companion planting will be your best friend to try and help prevent any sort of issues. So try and hide them. Um, so again, I put the, I put a picture of beans over here because beans will be really great to pull nitrogen from the air and put it into the soil because squash is one of those heavy feeders. So it'll help to almost fertilize the soil as it goes through. And then the nasturtium can help to actually repel squash bugs sometimes too. And, um, also, it'll help to trap your aphids and beetles, things like that, and they will stay on that plant instead of going to your squash bugs. And also, that nasturtium will help to bring in and attract beneficial critters. And then mint is another really, really good one because it will um, help to improve the flavor of the squash as well as repel those squash bugs. So it can be anything with that strong scent can really help to throw them off. So I highly recommend planting some mint and again, dill as well, because dill is going to help repel those squash bugs for you as well. So if you're having any sort of squash bugs, make sure you try dill and mint because those are two really big ones that can help to disguise your squash bugs. And then um, again, I put radish up here too, because radish does two things. It can help to um, break up any sort of compact soil that you have and it aerates the soil. So it makes it so your squash can absorb more nutrients and water as well as um, it can do some repelling as well. So radish helps with like cucumber beetles and squash bugs and aphids and all of that at the same time too. So um, uh, yeah, it all, uh, it all works really well together. So again, those are all really great. Those are probably my favorite companions for squashes just because it really helps to, um, to repel and help on a diff bunch of different ways. And then next, oh, I see there's a question. What about catnip? It self sows in my garden and I just let it grow. Is that a good idea? So catnip is just like mint. So it is it can be really beneficial for you and um, it can help to bring in, well, cats also. <laughs> Our cats love it. Um, but it can also help bring in pollinators and repel pests and things like that too. Um, but it is going to take over for sure. So I would try and contain it some way if you can. And so that way it has its own space and you don't have to constantly be fighting it out of the garden because you will be, you will be fighting it forever if you just let it go. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Kelly. Mint will take over your life for sure. For sure. I love mint. <laughs> Basil and sage. Do they attract pollinators all the time or only when flowering? So yes, that's a fantastic question. Um, it is going to be only when they're flowering will they be bringing in otherwise their scent is going to be working to repel the other pests and things like that but once you see that they've gone to flower you'll you'll notice a lot of pollinators coming in at, on them are zinnias shade tolerant morning sun Okay. Um, so zinnias definitely like full sun. I would recommend full sun. Um, but if they are going to be getting at least part, I'd say you should probably be okay. I would, um, I would, uh, absolutely give it a try. I think that's always worth it for me. Um, the place I have my zinnias all planted with that they do really well. They actually get, um, they get afternoon sun, but it's kind of opposite of yours. But I think that they would do really well. Okay, so next slide we are talking about, so cucumbers. So there are, this was another question. I got a lot of questions about cucumbers and cucumber beetles and things like that. So I wanna make sure I had a slide just about cucumbers as well. 
So cucumbers have a lot of the similar companions and helpful things. So the legumes such as the peas and beans are going to be really helpful. So things like, um, so over there, that'll help pull the nitrogen and give the cucumber your, you know, be fertilizing it for you. And then again, with the dill on the other side, I love dill. I'm a huge fan of it. It'll help again to bring in the predatory wasps and ladybugs, things like that, as well as the pollinators. So it really helps with a lot of different things. So the, the dill, I always recommend planting with things that you're having really difficult time pest wise with. Um, and then marigolds, again, is going to help with the beetles, like the cucumber beetles, especially if you're dealing with cucumber beetles. That's definitely an issue whenever you're growing cucumbers. So marigolds will be really helpful with that. Um, they'll also help with aphids if you're having those. And it'll help to bring in the wasp and things like that as well, too, which can help fight cucumber beetles and all that. And then root crops, again, are going to help break up the soil and... Um, and radish itself, too, is actually known to help with cucumber beetle, too. So that is something that you can look at helping for cucumber beetles, too. And then chives are another one that can help with it. And they also not only help with cucumber beetles, but they help to bring in pollinators, too. I mean, just look at it. It's so pretty. They have really beautiful flowers on it. Pollinators absolutely love chives. And chives are really great because they have a strong scent. So they can help to disguise your plants as well from any sort of um, pests that are circling your cucumber. So chives are another really good one. So those are all really good companions for cucumbers as well. And um, yeah, I think those were all, I tried to incorporate everybody's questions and try and do as much as I could to uh, pop in like helpful things for everybody. Um, so I think the next slide is the giveaway time. Oh boy. Okay. So for the giveaway today, what we were going to do was give away. So we, the wow Wednesday deal today. So park seed has a wow Wednesday deal every single Wednesday. Um, this week was really amazing. It was for the nanodome and this is where you, um, you can start your season here. It works really great for a lot of that super on sale today. It is an amazing deal. So fantastic deal. So check that out. Um, I believe they put the link in the chat over here. I'll have them pop it over there again if they did it. Um, so make sure you check that out. If you don't win, we're going to be giving away one of these as well as a subscription to our app for the premium service. So that way you guys can go through and log all of your plants in your garden and follow them throughout their journey through when it's time to harvest. And it, it'll be so helpful for you. Um, and also give you unlimited access to Growbot, which I don't, if you guys haven't seen Growbot before, he um, it's one of our newest features. Um, and with the premium version, you have unlimited questions for, for Growbot. And uh, Growbot is built with the same tech as ChatGTP, but it's geared towards gardening. So you can ask it any sort of gardening questions and things like that. So you can ask it what should I plant next to my corn? And it'll, it'll give you tips on companion planting, pest management. Um, yeah, all of the above there, there really hasn't been anything <laughs> that I haven't, uh, that I've stumped it on. I think I've been asking a lot of questions. It's fun to play with too. <laughs> okay. So they sent me the winner. Okay. Let's pop up the name. It is Kathleen Watkins. Kathleen Watkins. Congratulations, Kathleen. You are the winner for our, um, it is going to be for the Nanodome, which is the Wow Wednesday deal, and also a subscription to our app. So Kathleen, make sure you email us. Yep, there you go. Email us at info at seedtospoon.net, and we will get you hooked up with your, um, with your Nanodome, as well as with our app. So that'll be absolutely amazing. Okay. So we'll go through and, and answer as many questions as we can with our time frame. Cause I know so many people had so many questions and I want to try and answer as many people's questions as I can, if possible. Okay. 
My collard greens keep getting eaten by something that are chewing up the leaves. What do you recommend? So this is probably a caterpillar issue is my guess, um, especially on something like collard greens. Um, if I, I mean, it's definitely not too late to try doing um, one of the companion plants that'll help repel the um, cabbage moths and things like that, because that's what lays the worms for the caterpillars. Um, but you can also use things like BTK, which is organic. Um, and it's a spray that you can spray on the, uh, on the plant as well. Um, you can also do insect netting, things like that, because the, these caterpillars come from the moths up above. So they come in and they lay their eggs and then the moths just, um, and then they just eat. Ugh. Yeah, they're no fun. But that's definitely what I would recommend doing. Okay, what would you recommend for under fruit trees? Um, so underneath fruit tree, it depends on how shaded it is down there. Um, I would definitely say you can be planting some things um, to uh, like things like chives um, clover even to help bring in some pollinators and, um, improved nitrogen for that soil. So that'll really help with that fruit tree overall. Um, so things like that would do really well, but you want to make sure that, um, whatever you put under there can tolerate some shade too, because you probably have quite a bit of shade. So I would definitely look at things like clover or maybe even chives. Okay, how much lavender or mints need to be planted to discourage mosquitoes? <laughs> okay, so uh, this is a this is a tricky question because although um, I they're supposed to help with it, but I I don't know. I have a really hard time with mosquitoes. Mosquitoes absolutely loved me. And they do. They love me. Anytime I just step outside, they attack me. So we put them on our on our porch and I would still get eaten by mosquitoes. But um, I mean, they can help. But I would recommend doing more like walking up to it and like rubbing it on you because al almost like the essential oil. But if you were like rub the scent on you, that's when it kind of will help. But just planting them next to it isn't going to you know, probably not going to notice a huge, huge improvement but if it's enough to where you're like brushing up against it or like rubbing it on you that can definitely help too okay do the companion plants have to be in a bed with a vegetable okay so that's really um it's really going to depend on which it is so if it is ones that are bringing in the beneficials like the pollinators and um, the predatory insects, things like that. It absolutely does not have to be in the same bed. As long as it's within the vicinity, those predatory insects are going to find their food. And same as the pollinators, they're going to find wherever they're going to go. Um, but if it's things like um, marigolds with the, uh, with the roots, with the harmful nematodes that it's helping with, um, Things like that kind of need to be in the soil or things like the beans and peas with pulling the nitrogen and putting it into the soil. So things like that would definitely need to be in the same bed, but um, other, other ones can definitely just be in the vicinity and don't have to be like right up on top of it. Okay, my seedlings are turning yellow. So it probably, um, I always feel like water um, is typically the issue here whenever your seedlings are turning yellow, just probably too much water. Um, if they are older, I'd probably recommend giving them um, some fertilizer if they're, um, if they're older. But probably too much water is the culprit. You could be washing all the, the fertilizers out of the soil or the, like the nitrogen out of the soil. So you might need to help give them a little bit more, maybe back off on your watering a little bit right there too. And also, that's a really great question to ask Grobot too. I uh, I try to whenever I have seedling issues, I always go to Grobot and I'm like, "Help! My seedlings are leggy," and ask him. And Grobot always helps. It's amazing. 
friends for peppers. Um, so peppers are going to be, um, I, I always say, um, basil is one of my favorite things probably to plant with peppers, um, marigolds, nasturtium, things like that. Um, pretty much the same as tomatoes. So whenever I had that slide talking about, um, companions for tomatoes, pretty much all of those will apply to the pepper plants as well. Um, cause they're, so a lot of those will be the same, but again, like Basil is probably one of my favorite go-tos for it. So basil and marigolds, I, I always like that. So what plants do well in partial shade? Um, so for partial shade, especially if you are trying to extend the growing season of some of your cool season plants, a lot of your plants will do really well. So things like um, your greens, um, like the spinach, lettuce, um, things like that, you can plant in part shade, especially if you are getting later in the spring and you want to um, encourage them and keep them going as long into the summer as you can. That would be great to give some part shade. Um, we also have a filter in the app too um, to check out. Um, on the main screen, there's a filter section and you can actually filter by sun requirements too. Um, I think the filter is called can tolerate shade, I think is what it, what we have it. So check that filter out and it'll pop up all of the different plants that we have in our app that can tolerate part shade. How to keep aphids away. Okay. Aphids are definitely ones um, that you want to try and encourage as many ladybugs as possible. Um, so again, it's encouraging all of the ladybugs and planting all of those plants that we talked about earlier. So like the zinnias and marigolds, things like that will really help to attract in those ladybugs. And if you have aphids for them to eat, they aren't going anywhere. They're going to stay there and eat and eat and eat. They eat so many aphids. They're amazing. So definitely encourage ladybugs. Um, if you do notice that you have an aphid issue, pretty much all you need to do is just come up and just spray the underside of the leaves off with some water. And typically they'll all fall down to the base of the plant. Um, you may have to do this a couple times, but um, that's, that's typically what we do if we have an over over colonization of them. But typically we just let the ladybugs do their work and they can, they really help. Anyone deals with small snakes and lizards. The lizards drove me crazy last year. So these are actually really helpful um, to have in the garden. I know it's, it's a little scary, especially for me. Like I walk out there to the garden and uh, see this, this, well, it was a little snake. Luckily I did not walk up on a big snake, but it was a little snake. And I was like, Ooh, but you guys would be so proud of me. I left it alone. And I was like, okay, that snake is good. It's being helpful for me. It is helping with the bad bugs out here. I'm going to leave it be. So um, they're actually really beneficial to your garden. They can help with all sorts of critters and pests and things like that that can actually hurt your plants. So they are really good to have around. How far apart do you plant carrots from tomatoes? So usually what I do is um, I, I do square foot gardening methods a lot. So I will plant the, um, I mean, the carrots pretty much just in the square, like right in front of it or next to it, um, wherever it is that they will get a little bit of shade uh, from that tomato because carrots won't survive super long into the summer. So I try to extend their growing season a little bit by providing some shade for it, especially the afternoon shade, and it can survive a little bit longer into the summer. So I always try and give the carrots a little bit of shade from the tomatoes. How far or close should the marigolds be planted if used as a companion? So this kind of depends again, what, what benefit you're hoping to get from the marigold. So if you're wanting to attract in the pollinators and the uh, predatory insects and things like that, as long as it's within the vicinity of the area that you're going for, that's great. Um, if you are wanting it to help with the um, harmful nematodes that are in the soil, um, then I would plant it at least within that same area, that same pipe. 
um, pot will, it will be really helpful. So that way the, the chemicals can be released through the soil. Um, but otherwise, as long as it's within the vicinity, you should be good. Oh no, Courtney, chipmunks ate everything. I didn't want to harm them. What can I, how can I keep them away? Okay. So that is challenging. Um, I would recommend trying a motion activated sprinkler if you haven't before, because that can be super fun. Um, and we always use our, we always plug in our motion activated sprinklers and then forget that we have them. So, um, we always walk in and it sprays us and gets us, but how the motion activated sprinkler works is you put it uh, next to your problem area where you notice you have an issue. And then whenever there's movement around it, that motion activated sprinkler will just suddenly start shooting off water in, in kind of an erratic pattern. So that way it scares whatever it is that walks by and makes them run away. Um, so pretty soon they'll learn to try and stay away from that area. Um, so I would definitely recommend trying something like that um, since you don't want to hurt them or do anything like that. So I would definitely recommend doing that, which is trying to just get them, get them away. Okay. How do I keep slugs from eating and burrowing into my green peppers? I lost a few that I actually, oh, I'm so sorry. That is so sad because I love green peppers. It is so much fun. Um, so what I would recommend for slugs is actually overnight setting out a little, um, just a little container, very shallow of some old beer that you have, like in the back of your fridge, just take some, pour it into there. Um, the slugs will go in there overnight and you will come back in the morning to lots of bodies. <laughs> so that's the best thing to do for any sort of slug and snail issue. It's just the old fashioned beer trap. Is there any plant that will discourage groundhogs from raining your garden because of taste or fragrance? So what I would recommend for that, I'd probably try and honestly cover something from down below where they're coming from. Um, maybe like hard, like that hardware remesh um, or, or cloth, like something down below. Um, see if maybe they can't climb through that. Oh, man. We haven't dealt much with groundhogs out here, luckily. Okay. Well, I thank you guys so much for coming and joining me um, during this lunchtime. It was really fun, and I'm glad we got to sit here and chat and talk all about companion plants. All of my favorite plants. I love growing all of these. And if you guys do have any other questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section and... Um, and we will try and get back with you um, either through there or I make other videos too. I'll post them here on this YouTube channel. And then we do these webinars every two weeks. Um, we alternate. We're going to be alternating doing them at lunchtime and then evening times. So um, hopefully you guys can all join us for the next webinar here in a couple weeks. And um, every Wednesday there is a Wow Wednesday deal at Park Seed. So make sure you check that out too. And um, if there's anything too um, that you guys wanted to go back and watch again on this webinar, make sure you check it out. We'll have this recording up and posted on our YouTube channel. So you guys can feel free to go and watch it and learn whatever you want and share with anybody who might have any other questions. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate seeing you all here. Have a good rest of your day.